Okay, so today by popular demand, I'm going to be doing a video tutorial on removing and installing the carriage of a Royal Model 10 typewriter. And really the instructions uh, set forth in this video can be used on any Royal Standard typewriter. So let's get into it. Okay, we're going to start off a little bit simple here with the carriage on the machine. Now the first thing you want to do, of course, is take off the top two front body panels as well as the top two rear body panels, which, as you can see, I have already done. Now, if you notice here, I've already removed the draw strap, and if you don't remove it, you're going to want to make sure that you replace the screw at the end of the machine, and that is what you hook the draw band onto. It's just going to slip over on the big hole and hold tight just like that. It might also be helpful to remove the glass side panel. It just swings out from the bottom and pops out. So if you happen to drop any parts or screws on the inside of the machine, you can easily retrieve them without having to dismantle the base plate. So now that you have both the body panels and the draw band secured and off the machine, we're going to next remove the paper table. Now on the flatbed models and the earlier pre-1930s Model 10s, the side brackets that hold the paper table in place will be in the way of the actual removal process. Make sure you detach any springs that are holding anything down. We can leave that one for now, that's just the paper bale spring, but the springs that are holding down the paper table need to come off, as well as the two round bolts from either side. Once you take that off, you can gently apply pressure to one side of the carrots and swing the entire paper table off. With that aside, we come to the center of the machine. And if you'll notice, there's a very shiny bearing rod there that rides between two wheels. We need to unscrew and remove the top wheel. So we're going to just lift up the paper bale roller to get access with a screwdriver. And I'm just going to quickly undo that. Once that is off, you'll notice to the immediate right is the backspace mechanism. When you backspace the machine, that applies tension on the carriage rack to prevent it from lifting up. That entire mechanism needs to be removed because it is in the way of the pieces you need to access. So we're going to slip, and I would recommend a magnetic screwdriver on the inside of the machine to undo the pivot screw there. But first, we need to grab the tension spring and undo that. Okay, once that is off the machine, we're just going to let it dangle by the other pivot point. And as you can see, the mechanism for the backspace falls forward. Now, on carriage shift models like the Royal Flatbeds and the late, earlier, sorry, earlier Model 10s, we're going to place the machine on shift lock, and as you can see, that raises the screw up that pivots this mechanism to be accessible for removal. Now, of course, if you're aware, the newer model machines with segment shifted baskets don't actually allow you to access that screw, but uh, you don't need to worry about that because the screw in the back of these machines is actually a bolt. And what you can do is remove the back um, body panel plate on the top like we did for the Model 10 and slip a pair of pliers or a wrench in there and undo that pivot point. So with the carriage on shift lock and a magnetic tipped screwdriver, I'm going to undo this one screw, grab it with the tip of my finger to help carry it out, and remove it from the machine. Now, if you'll notice, this is now dangling because of the round bit at top. On the later machines, it will just slip out. But what you can do instead is slide this all the way over to the right and bring it out. Now once that's done, the carriage is essentially ready to remove. If you will look underneath, you will notice that there are five carriage brackets holding the top rail onto the bottom rail. We are going to remove the left three. Now I know in the US Navy manual of 1941, they recommend leaving the middle one in and taking out the two end ones. I feel like that's a little bit unnecessary and while it's a bit tricky to get the middle one out, it makes it a lot easier to install the carriage once you're ready to do that. Now the easiest way to access the first two on the end is simply to move your margins all the way to both extreme sides and then return the carriage until both of these are overhanging. 
Then with a properly slotted screwdriver, I'm using the Chapman tool set with the, let's see, the number 95 bit. We can undo both of these brackets. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. You don't need to worry about the placement of these. I know they're adjustable, but when we put the carriage back on, we'll adjust it accordingly. Oops, I dropped it. Don't lose the parts. Okay, for this one, it's a little bit tricky because the Chapman bits are not magnetized. You can do that, of course, or you can just unscrew it, grab it with your fingertip, and then pull it out. We're gonna do that the same way here. Pull it out, grab it with your fingertip, and well, it fell in, but that's okay. Now that we have both of those out, we're going to press the carriage release, move the carriage all the way to extreme left, and we are going to gently bring it up and pitch it forward and maneuver it off of the top of the machine. And that is how you remove the carriage on a Royal Standard typewriter. Reinstallation of the carriage is basically the same thing in reverse, but there are a couple things that you should be aware of before you begin. First of all, it's probably easiest to install the draw band on the machine first. Installing the draw band is really easy. What you're going to want to do first is wind the mainspring drum. Once it's wound and it should pull the carriage about two pounds, you're going to want to slip one end of the draw band over that hooked peg. Now, I'm not using the original draw band this machine came with because it's hot glued back together in two places. And then you're going to slightly let it take up tension and hook the other end of the draw band on that peg that we mentioned earlier. And it should look something like that. Over there on the end, let's zoom in. This camera's terrible. There we go. That's what it should look like. Next comes the part that trips most people up, the carriage ball bearings. Now there are two ball bearings for these machines, the standard ball bearing and then a round gear that goes on top of it. Now if you'll notice, this is a stamped piece of metal. It has a flat side and it has a rounded side. The rounded side goes on the top. And we're going to stick this just inside the edge of the machine frame. Now over here on the right hand side of the machine, for the user, which would be your left hand side, you're going to look for the post that holds together the ribbon vibrator assembly. And just on the inside of that post, we are going to place the second ball bearing right there and make sure that the curved rounded side of the gear is seated on top of that. Now comes the tricky part, the part that everybody dreads, but it's really quite easy. There's one thing you need to look out for. This is the upper bearing bracket. We need to make sure that that fits over the top of the carriage rack. This is what's triggered with the carriage release. We want it on top of that little metal lip. And to do that, we are going to position the carriage over the machine, pitch it forward, and then tuck it right underneath that bar. Once you get it over that little lip, we're going to rotate it straight up and down. And then before pressing down on the carriage rails, we're going to move it to the extreme carriage left on the user side until it hits the margin stop. Then we press down, seat firmly on both rails, and advance the carriage all the way to the other side. At that point, you can let go and begin reinstalling the other parts. Okay, we're going to do this again at another angle because this is the tricky part. We're going to pitch forward, get it right underneath that rail, pitch the carriage back into its proper orientation, and then slowly glide it on top of the rails until you hit the margin stop before pressing it firmly down on both ball bearings and then returning the carriage. And then again from a lower angle, we're going to bring the carriage in, pitch it forward, slip the carriage rack underneath the upper bearing support, rotate it into orientation, hold it above the ball bearings, move it until you hit the margin stop, and then seat firmly down on the rails and the bearings and advance the carriage. Once you have done that, before you do anything else, I would highly recommend replacing the upper carriage bearing 
and that will help hold the machine and the carriage secure while you reassemble the rest of it. I'm just going to slot that right in place, tighten it down, and you are good to go. Now when it comes to reinstalling the central bearing clip, this is where it becomes pertinent to have a good slotted screwdriver. And again, this is the Chapman 95 bit. We are going to stick it on the end of the screwdriver, hold the bracket in its position underneath, and aim that screw into the machine and tighten it down. When I say tighten, I mean tighten loosely. As you can see, my other clips here are free to move. And that's what we're going to need for the adjustments. With the carriage now firmly seated and all the brackets on the bottom in place loosely, we're going to verify that the machine slides freely back and forth on the carriage or on the carriage rails. Now with the carriage to the left opposite the return, we are going to grab that bracket, move it into a place where it is just touching the bottom rail and tighten that down into place lightly. And we should be secure on that one side with the still freely moving carriage. If it's at all tight when you get in here like this is, you're going to need to loosen it up just a little bit. And that process is then repeated on all of the brackets to make sure they're all aligned properly. Now once you have that in place and everything is aligned nicely, the carriage glides smoothly, we're going to take the backspace bracket on the right end of the carriage, slide it all the way over into position, and then using the magnetic tip screwdriver, which is very helpful, we're going to hold the top of the bracket in place and line up the hole. It's a little bit tricky. And then screw it into place. With a little bit of wiggling, it'll pop right in, and from that point on, we can tighten it down, grab our spring hook, and reattach the spring on the bracket. And then your machine should backspace. And it does. On the other side of the carriage, I'll bring the camera over, we are going to take the draw band from the machine off of its little hook post, come on, and then attach it to the end of the carriage. After that, it should operate under its own power. From this point on, we're going to want to make sure that the machine is operating under its own power. And then it's just adjustments until you're done. And that is all. That's how you install the carriage on a Royal Desktop typewriter. And we're done. Ta-da. Bye.